Queen Sugar. I'm telling you, if you ain't watching Queen Sugar, I don't know what the hell you doing on Wednesday nights. Because uh, Empire Show ain't on because of uh, the World Series and all of that. But child, get on to this Queen Sugar. Now, y'all know. I told you a bitch is back. But child, tonight, I'm going to tell you something. Tonight episode was so goddamn good. I don't, I mean, I, child, Ava, D. Barney, and Oprah, and all the other cast members, and behind the scene people, kudos to each and every one of y'all, because I truly enjoyed tonight's episode, and we've been talking about it too, child, because we've been out for a week since the debates was on last week, they, we didn't, they didn't love on us last week, but they loved on us well this week, and I enjoyed my shit, now we open up when I'm by on the phone with Noah. Because y'all remember, the storm is coming, okay? She on the phone with her, and um, she trying, well, she calling her. Nova ain't answering the phone, although we see her later in the call with Chantel and Miss Blaine. She, she was getting them calls. She just wasn't answering because she already knew. Now, you got Charlie and Michael talk about going to some school to visit it, right? Now, it's these people is on the telephone, I mean, on the TV we hear you know, they ain't, they ain't put the TV on, you know, where we could see it or nothing. But we sitting here and we listening to the news report saying that this storm is getting worse and worse. Why Michael still got on here on his good Sunday go to meeting outfit talking about he going to visit some school? Um, but I told him, child, you might as well sit down because I'm telling you, this is going to be canceled, honey. Ain't nothing going to be going on because of this inclement weather. So Charlie get on the phone and she called the school and sure enough, Everything has been canceled, so he ain't going on no school, uh, uh, you know, tour no school. Not, not today. It ain't gonna happen because it's storm coming, honey. And so, uh, Charlie decides she gonna go over there to check on the phone. Okay. Um, but I say tell Ralph Angel to Herb get his butt over here, uh, with my blue, cause he know that this is the safe haven when storms come. Well. Charlie had to tell him, now, you know, uh, Hollywood down there, too. Should I bring him back, too? Um, but I say, uh, he a grown man. I said family. He can fend for himself and whoever else he may have there. So we know she's still upset about the wife, you know, the bipolar wife showing up and causing all of that ruckus. And the fact that he just didn't tell her is really what's got her hurt. So, you got Chantel and Nova, like I said, they driving Miss uh, Blanche to a safe haven. I think they took her to a shelter or something. Well, they mentioning she got a niece, you know, and she ain't that far away from where the niece lives. And she could swing and get the niece. But the auntie said, well, Miss Blanche said, well, you know, all I can do is pray for her because she going to have to stay. Because that boss of hers done already told her that if she don't show up for work tomorrow, that... She'll be fine, so we're going to have to pray for her. And I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. Oh, that's fucked up. Mm, mm, mm. That woman had to stay. And it's a lot of people, believe it or not, went through that. Well, anyway, we see Charlie. She done made it to the forum. And, you know, Hollywood, they're saying that this going to fluid, you know, and this shit is not going to be good. So they, you know, they out, they going outside. And uh, Remy, Remy there, too, y'all. Remy there, too. Remy about to go tell the little Mexican workers they could go because, see, they got to catch a bus and ride 45 minutes to, I guess, wherever they are located, wherever they live or whatnot. Okay? So it's going to be a, a commute for them. So since this storm is in intensifying um go ahead and let them go but see charlie's she not thinking about the human side of this whole situation yes if they leave early and they haven't finished planning then yeah you may stand to lose here but at the same time we talking about people lives and they need to get home to their families as well you wouldn't want your son out there in that shit why the hell you want these mexican workers to stay out there and remy trying to explain to her that you know what the situation is why these men really do need to go on out and be able to leave but she ain't trying to hit that shit all she thinking about is they ain't finished playing so she sent them back out in the field i was like girl you really got a heart girl oh i don't never want to be that kind of rich that i lose uh you know my compassion for humanity god damn well nova and charlie finally get um not nova and chantelle is who i'm talking about she with chantelle on this trip her and Chantel get Miss Blanche to her safe haven. Now, before they get there, she done already offered because they listening on the radio and this storm is getting worse and worse. So, Chantel has offered Nova to come and stay at her house. Nova sitting there talking about already. 
Girl, the woman ain't trying to cuff you. This bitch trying to make sure that she can eat you again. That's all that is. She ain't trying to cuff you or nothing like that. She trying to protect her pussy. And who can, I mean, you really can't, what, what you gonna do? You, I mean, you know. She tell her that too. Yeah, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to cuff you. I'm just offering you that because of the storm. And she was like, oh, and she apologized. She said she kind of, you know, jumped the gun there. And she, she realized that she ain't mean to be that kind of way. It's just that, you know, this is the first time she done felt free and liberated. So she don't want nobody to come back in and try to do to her what probably Calvin had her going through, which was being cuffed by a married man, okay? So we give Miss uh, Blanche down to her safe haven. And um, they give her something, but she talking about, honey, you ain't got nothing else for me. And I wonder, like, what else did, did she want her to give her? Baby, Miss Blanche wanted them two joints Nova gave her. She said she can make it through any storm with them. I must have hollered. That lady was happy as hell to get them two joints. She was ready to go on, on up in there to that uh, safe haven. I don't know, I guess a shelter or whatever, but y'all I holler. I said, no, God, not the old lady wanted her some weed. I know that's right, Mom. Ain't nothing you can do but smoke and sit it out. Okay, well, why that? Chantel is taking her in there to get her registered in or whatever the situation may be. We got Noah finally giving Aunt Vi a call. And I'm like, girl, you should have been called your auntie. And you know Aunt Vi is weary. Uh, you ain't been answering that damn phone. So she calling. And Aunt Vi like, look, you need to get your ass cross punch the train before it uh, fuck around and flood. And you be stuck over there. Get out that night ward and get your ass over here to where there's some safety and refuge. You remember what happened last time. You were stranded them three days and we almost lost you. Well, Nova said, look, it, it's my responsibility to make sure that I help my neighbors that needed help. And I had to make sure that they were able to get out as well. Okay. Now, I'm, finna, I'm on my way. I will be there. And don't worry about me. Um, if I say, girl, okay. Now, come on now, Nova. Stop playing. All right. So, we see Dollar. Now, here come the storm, but here come Dollar, too. She coming bearing a birthday gift. Ralph ain't to tell her, girl, what is you doing out here in this storm? Talking about a birthday gift, and you, you're a little too late, ain't you? are a month late. She said, look, I didn't have the money by then. You know, I didn't have the money a month ago. I got it now, and I just wanted to bring it to him. Can I give it to him? He said, no. Mm-mm. You know, I still can't just trust you. I, I mean, you done had this heroin addiction. We done found out you was down there in the garage with some man and had your baby in there. You was tricking with your child and, and you, you done been on that heroin real bad, girl. And, you know, even though I done came over to the trailer park and tapped that puss, don't mean that I'm going to let you get go up in here and just have free will with our child because I don't trust you like that there. I really don't. And why is you really out here? Because I can't believe that you just simply out here because you want to uh, see your son. She said, look, the trailer park being evacuated. I just wanted to see him before I go to the shelter. I'm on my way to the shelter. So he told her no again, okay? But Blue done seen her, and you know he done ran out there. Mommy, mommy, he happy as hell. He want to be with her. So now it puts Ralph Angel in a position to where he has to allow her to come on through because he can't just put her off the land with the boy standing right there and traumatize him and shit. So he tell her, you know, you better watch yourself because I'm watching you. And he let her go on on up in there with him. But see, Hollywood then came out and said, look, this storm is getting even worse. We need to get what we need to be getting, okay? It done switched uh, directions and it's been upgraded. So now at this point, we are category two, okay? Next thing we see is Hollywood and Remy putting up boards on the, the farmhouse, right? And Charlie, she she looking at how how uh Hollywood demeanor is and he she know how her aunt Vi is too, but she just left her. And she's telling him, you know, I'm kinda concerned about them. But Remy say, Look, they grown. They gonna work this situation. I ain't no need being worried about what grown folks gonna do because they gonna do what they wanna do. Okay, then she tell him that he can go ahead on and leave and go secure his own house. He told her, girl, I've been felt this storm weeks ago. Trust me, my I am ready. Uh, my house is secure uh, for whatever happens. So I'm good here, okay? Uh, the storm is nearing, so 
Ralph ain't gonna put Blue into the truck. He get ready to head over to on 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 buy house. But Darla standing on that porch because see she kind of apprehensive. She don't know if she need to be trying to go with them because on buy don't see it for her. So she say you know she kind of hesitating about that. He telling her to come on. She talking about well buy may not have no room for me or nothing like that. Well like I said the storm is approaching so ain't nobody got time to be sitting here playing with you. He told her what you gonna do and she thought better of it and got ass on up in that truck, okay? Now, at this point, Remy is getting ready to go tell them workers they can go. But see, Charlie, again, she thinking about profit. She not thinking about lives, you know. She don't care about these people. Not per se. Well, I'm not going to say she ain't care. I'm going to say she didn't think about it enough to where it would register with her. We need to be more concerned about these people lives because they got families and shit opposed to what we may lose in this field if uh, we get a flush out or they're not able to continue the planning. He told her, he said, they got to go. Or do you want to have them, you know, you want to find them dead in their field out there. She finally realized that, girl, look, it ain't all about the money, bitch. You already done said you're going to divorce your husband and sue his ass for everything he got. And he is an NFL player and y'all live real good. So you're going to be all right. You can take a little loss. Don't act like that. She said she's going to go on and tell the people they can go home. And I said, good, because I sure hated to have to read your light-skinned ass on this episode, okay? Now, let's go back over to Unbuy House, because Hollywood and them, and it, Hollywood, Blue, Dollar, and Ralph Angel done arrived, and, and he automatically is outside fixing the boards on her windows, because she ain't did it right. She asking him he uh, what he doing. He said, these boards ain't up here right. I'm making sure it's secure. She told him, you need to worry about where you stay, because it ain't here. And while she's saying this shit, Blue done came in the house and, you know, he's screaming for her and stuff. So she go to greet him and ran right on into Darla. And she was surprised as fuck to see Darla because we all know. Um, but I don't see it for uh, fucking Darla. Uh, she spoke to her, told her it was a surprise that she was there too. But she didn't cut no fool in front of that child. And like I said, traumatized him in any way. So what she did was she had Ralph Frank to come holler at a player. And when he came and hollered at a player, she said, let me tell you something, she got to go. He said, look, it's a storm coming, and she was at the house. She said, I don't give a damn. This girl has acted like being a mother to this child. She done treated this shit like a revolving dough. So I don't have no problem revolving her ass out into that storm. She need to get what we call the fuck out of here. And, child, I wasn't playing now, um, I still worried, though, because uh, she been calling Nova yet again, because it's done been two hours, and she's supposed to be there by now, but she ain't there. And um, Charlie's there and everything now, and Charlie was like, you know, she she probably will answer. She'll be okay. Well, as she's saying that, here comes Charlie walking in the door, taking off her rain gear, I mean Nova. And Charlie going to say to her, why you didn't answer instead of worrying now about She said, girl, look, you weren't even worried about me. So lay off of it. I'm about to say, well, she might have to lay off, but I ain't got to lay off. You should have called me. Anyway, I started asking her about, you know, how was it down in the ninth ward and stuff. She said that, you know, they had did as best they could. But right now, at that time, the ninth ward was currently under about four inches of water. And Nova, I mean, Charlie decides to say to Nova, why don't you just move to the quarters? She told her not everybody runs away. I rebuilt once and I'll rebuild again. And then she they about to get into it. Here come Michael and Hollywood and you know them my boys, so she was glad to see them. She went to talking to um Hollywood about the spades and how she gonna whoop his ass later on on them spades and uh she was talking to Michael about a school. I can't remember which one was it. Um I don't know if it was Southern uh, Southern Baton Rouge, or, or was it, uh, in it, it, what is it, in University of New Orleans, U, in, UNO, whatever, I don't know which one of them schools, or LSU, I don't know which one of them she was talking about, uh, going to, you know, I really don't, but wherever it's said, she telling him that if he get in there, then he could stay with her, because that's right there in the city, he excited about it, Saying that, you know, that would be a good opportunity, you know, if he get in there, shit, that's where he want to be because they have fun together. But see, Charlie's still in her fucking feelings about her 10 G's. So she talking about Nova, um, Nova uh, have her own life and she ain't got to be worried with no Michael. Uh, Nova clapped back and asked her, oh, how is uh, having my nephew a burden to me in any kind of way? 
Now, there's this brief silence because, see, the tension's been rising between the two of them. So, everybody kind of quiet because we feel like it's been to go down. But it don't because Hollywood steps in talking about the table ready. So, they broke up all of the, you know, uh, all the tension that was about to boil over up in that room. Okay. I forgot to tell y'all, before Nova walked in and stuff like that, Charlie was in that bathroom. She was going through that, you know, do I take my ring off? Do I consider this a done daughter? How do I move on from this point in my life? She come out and Remy was sitting there on the couch. He watching the news here in this storm has now been upgraded to category three. And um, so she told him, he's staying overnight. He's like, oh, you kidnapping me now? She said, yes, if this storm gets bad, I'm not gonna, you're not going to drive out there. He said, I ain't hard-headed like that, child. And um, I said, uh, even if you was, it wouldn't matter because you already know you're staying here overnight. So it's decided Remy's staying. Now, Darla is telling Blue a bedtime story, okay? He's they getting him ready for bed. And um, she just, you could tell he misses mama. He misses his mom. He listened to her story. I think her story had something to do with either how her relationship was with her, with him, her and um, Ralph, or as it had something to do with her life in some kind of way. Cause it was kind of important, but I wasn't really listening, y'all. Forgive me. But what I did notice was Ralph Angel was standing his chocolate there, uh, the light ass at that door, and he was listening to all of that stuff. Okay, so. We go downstairs where they playing spades, listening to music and drinking as the storm is now approaching. They reminiscing about how Daddy Borderline used to be when he played spades. And then um, they asked Michael what the score is. And child, you can tell he ain't from the hood. He ain't got no hood in him. This child was way past 500. Everybody know you get to 500, that's it. So they joking with him about not knowing how to play spades. And Nova say, when you come stay with me, I'm going to teach you how to play spades. Now, Charlie can't be quiet. She talking about, um, you you might not be ready for the responsibility of a kid. And she was like, I got this. I mean, I have a good time with my nephew. I know how to take care of him and do the things I need to do. She say, oh, well, maybe he ain't ready for you. <laughs> so uh, when she said that, Nova asked her what that meant. And Charlie tried to leave it alone. She wasn't going to go into it. She was going to leave it alone because she walked off and went to that kitchen. But you know, Nova then had enough. She wasn't having it. So they go in that kitchen and baby, uh, on by say, y'all need to keep that shit down because blue sleep. But uh, carry on. And they did. She wound up calling Nova, uh, Charlie a bougie bitch. See, she wasn't get, uh, she said she wasn't, uh, giving her son she wasn't letting her son go down to the lower ninth war where he could be killed or end up with a ten thousand dollar bun y'all know i told you she mad about that money and uh she also told nova she said uh you sleeping with a married man first she mentioned her sleeping with a woman so I'm saying, uh-uh, this 2016, I ain't tripping about them. Do you sleep with no woman and nothing like that there? Well, my concern is that you act like you don't realize that my marriage just ended and my son's life, our lives are forever changed. Noble said if you stop being so goddamn overprotective and overbearing, he might can rebuild. She said, you don't know nothing about my son. You don't have no morals of your own. She said, you out there growing weed and everything else. And Charlie said, oh, okay, well, I grow it and you smoked it with me. Well, Nova said, you grow it. I grow it and you smoked it with me. And, and she cracked her face because she couldn't say nothing. She just had to put that head down. I said, oh, okay, she coming out. But in the end, she told her, look, my thing is, you sleeping with a married man. I don't know about the rest of y'all in my family, but I still respect what marriage means, even if mine went to shit. And I refuse to have my son around somebody else who does not, you know, believe in the sanctity of marriage and being honest and keeping trust going between the two of them. She said, I don't give a damn how you live your life, Noble. I really don't. But you keep my goddamn son out of it. You hear what I say? She walked out. Okay. Now, Blue... He wake up, he a little scared, because he went to sleep with Darla. Now, Darla then, he feeling better about, you know, just a little storm, because he heard the shit, the thunder and stuff. He was a little scared. But he feels safe, because he got his mama there, and Ralph came in there, too, and he wanted him to just join them in the bed, so that he could feel real safe and secure. And uh, and Ralph was just, he was about to do it. But um, if I heard that shit, no. He said he was. He said he would. And he got in the bed with them. 
um, vowels at that table on Nova ass asking her, so you messing around with a married man? Nova was saying, um, it ain't like that. You know, our situations is different. She said, girl, your mom went through this with Ernest, and she named somebody else that they had, that she witnessed cheating on her husband, I mean, on her, cheating and stuff. So, you can't tell me that you ain't, the situations ain't the same. It is what it is. So you telling me that with watching all of that, you that don't have nothing to do with what you're doing right now. She said, "Well, I guess you don't remember that, huh? Since they situation so much different from what you got going on." Hmm. I said, "You better read undercover, uh, uh, on by." Later on, we see on by she uh she getting ready for bed, but she looking at this photo of Ernest and Hollywood saw and walked in, and he said, "I miss him too." If I said, child, if Ernest was here, he'd ran you out of town by now, just like he did Jimmy Dale. Now, see, I don't know who Jimmy Dale is, but Jimmy Dale must not be a good character because Hollywood wasn't having you. Uh, you're not going to compare me to that piece of shit. And he, she told, he told her, look, me and Jimmy Dale ain't nothing alike. He a boy and was a coward. She said, yeah, you're right about that. Mm hmm he, he was all of that, and you, you are a little bit better than him because you ain't never hit you ain't never hit me, but you gave me one hell of a punch. Hollywood say, look, Vi, I love you, okay? I love you. He said I married her because she was pregnant. We weren't really in no relationship. I just, you know, how it was, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And the whole wind up pregnant, and I was trying to be an honorable man, and I married her. Shortly after we was married, she lost the baby. And that's when her condition works. And she don't have nobody. But I said she got to have somebody. She say, he say, child, she got a uh, operate, telephone operator cousin that call him every time she feel like the woman off her pills. So she don't have nobody. He said, my big mama would roll over in my grave if she knew that I left somebody like that with no help. He said, we not like that, Vi. You ought to know that about me. She, he said, everything I told you was the truth. I ain't tell you no lies about this. Now, I may should have told you that this woman, you know, what the situation was still, but I ain't never lied to you. And she was like, well, now I see why you never wanted to get married. He said, I ain't never, that. well, hold up, let me stop you there. He said, but I don't know why we ain't never got married, because I ain't never felt like you wanted to get married. But, uh... I'm not, I'm the man you thought I was, basically. Get child, he a good man. Child, we ain't got many of these. I'm telling you, I'm by, girl, you better go on and get over and shit and go on and get back with your man, honey, because ain't no sense in being by yourself. It's going to be cold and shit, and you're going to need you some comfort of a man. And I don't give a damn what no bitch say, no matter how independent you is. Bitch, every woman needs, or at least wants her a man, okay, and I know I do, so I ain't finna never act like that, girl, I would've probably gave him some right there, we'd've ride the storm out like that, I'm telling you, now, Darla, she lighting a lamp because the power done went out, okay, and Ralph ain't to come in now, and Blue and finally went to sleep, yes, he did, he just is cute and adorable, yes, he is, my me and my Jalen, well, he tell Darla that, uh, he done fixed her a pallet in the living room. She can go up in there and sleep. He gonna sleep in here with Blue. She talking about, um, we both can sleep in here. And on Vi, Spider Sense was picked up on that shit. And the first thing, Ralph Angel, come here. Baby, she get Ralph Angel out there. She said, look, I'm telling you again. She about to infiltrate your Carter. That girl ain't no good for you. I warned you about her before. He tell her, um, Vi, could you just please let me handle this and stay out of it for once? She said, the last time I stayed out of it, you got the baby and you know how she was. So I'm not finna be cool with her like that. And as they talking, Darla come out and ain't, been, ain't Vi ain't never scared. I know that's right, bitch. Keep talking. Uh, but Vi, Darla came in with a story of her own and I said, oh. Darla came in and she said, she not a pass, you know. That's not who she is today. If I told her, girl, come back in 18 years and tell me that, and maybe I'll believe you. She said, you expect me to wait 18 years to, to get my son again? I said, baby, if it was up to me, you would never see Blue again. And Hollywood walked in, and she's saying that. So it's on by Ralph Angel, Darla, and Hollywood. And that girl had something to tell on by that put her, uh, made her brain shake a little bit because it made her think. She said, I thank you, Unviolet, for all you done did for me. 
she recalled a time when she was in a hotel room and everybody came to save her and all this shit. She recalled her past, her lowest point. But she said she knew that by, because she said God bless her would always, her son would be okay. And she knows she don't did a lot of bad things. I'm paraphrasing. She didn't did a lot of bad bad things, but she wants a chance to bring about peace where she once caused discord. And she don't know how long it's gonna take her to do that, but she just that's her goal. She ain't here to start no shit. She just want a chance to first of all say thank you to Violet for being the woman that she was and stepping in and helping her child, and two an opportunity to redeem herself so that everybody don't hate her motherfucking ass, okay? And that kind of left her little Violet thinking, cause you know, if you're a true Christian, you can't help but feel some kind of way about this situation. So I got it. And Hollywood, you know, he a good upstanding dude. He walked over there and shook her hand and everything is up to say, girl, I'm going to give you a chance, okay? And I was here for that. See, I'm telling you, child, I likes me some Hollywood now. I'm telling you. Mm, mm, mm. Now, we see the guy later on. I think she was praying or she was doing something. She was looking at Hollywood, okay? And then we see Charlie. She fooling around with that red ring again. And I guess she finally decided to accept that, girl, look, you just have what many of us women who didn't anticipate having but eventually did wind up having. You have what we call a failed marriage. Divorce is imminent. Just go on and do that. And she must have been all right with that because as soon as she took that shit off, she went right in there where Remy was sleeping at and he wasn't sleep. And he realized she was standing there. They stared at each other a moment. Then he get up and have her slide. Well, he slide on over and she slide on in there with him. And they stared at each other a moment. Then Charlie ends up, like I said, she laying there in his arms and they begin to kiss. And that was it, child. I said, this is some good shit tonight. I was impressed. I was happy. And y'all got a full review. I ain't think I left out not one goddamn scene. I gave y'all all that it was there. But that shit was good, honey. That shit was good. I ain't stick around for the previews of next week so I don't know what the hell gonna happen because I was just impressed and I wanted to talk about it before I get on the phone tomorrow with my sister from another mister from the D and get to running this shit down this was some good shit y'all if you ain't into it, get your ass on into it before it's too late. I'm telling you, I told y'all about Greenleaf. I be trying to get y'all some quality shit around here. But y'all don't be listening to a bit sometimes. I'm telling you, watch these shows. Because I don't watch no bullshit. But that's it, y'all. And I'm finna go to bed. In the meantime, in between time, please like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you all tomorrow for... Well, now y'all ain't gonna see me tomorrow. Y'all see me again Friday for How to Get Away with Murder. And fuck shit Friday, because I told you, if you don't give me nothing to talk about, it won't happen. But if you give me something I can run with, at least I need about enough uh, enough for me to be able to talk for at least 20 minutes. And I will get on here and I will talk about it. Somebody asked me to speak about the Michelle A. biopic that came on last weekend. I, if I get a chance tomorrow, because I do have a busy schedule, I may give y'all as a, that as a review. I'll talk about, you know, what my thoughts was, because I got plenty. And, um... That's it. Good night. Bye.